Okay, welcome to lesson 4.1. We're now going to change gears away from our decimals and we're going to work with angles and polygons. Before we can begin, the first thing we have to do is start talking about naming angles, the types of angles, classifications, and that works with stuff like parallel, perpendicular, acute. So what I want you to do is I want you to open up your textbook to 125, but I'm going to help you out here because I've already got page 125 ready for you. So on this here, this is a quilt, as you're probably aware, and on this quilt, there's a whole bunch of different types of angles and stuff. And if you look over on the right-hand side here, you'll see all the different types of terms that we need to be able to get you to understand. So you have to know what an angle is, what an arm is, and all the different types of angles. And we'll work with protractors and stuff like that a little bit later, okay? But for now, let's just take a look at this quilt. On this quilt, you should see that we have a whole bunch of different types of angles. I've got this angle here, which if you look at it, it's actually 90 degrees, even though it's kind of rotated. Here's another 90 degree angle. You notice that this line right here and this line right here, they're parallel. You'll notice that this is perpendicular, right? 90 degrees means it's perpendicular. You'll see that this angle right here is acute, which means it's less than 90 degrees. And we're going to start talking about all these different types of angles as we go through things, okay? So if you take a look here, you'll see that it said, what shapes do you see in this quilt? You should have seen triangles, squares, rectangles, parallelograms, and rhombuses. Uh, a parallelogram is just two, uh, sorry, uh, a quadrilateral four-sided figure that has two parallel sides. Okay? And where do you see examples of parallel lines on the quilt? If you take a look, here's the line here going up and down. Here's the line here. So this line here and this line here are parallel. This one here is parallel to this one down here. Even though they're not necessarily side by side, you can still be parallel because parallel means when you extend it outwards on both sides that they don't cross. Kind of like train tracks. That's the one we mostly use as an example. Okay? So how do you know they're parallel? The sides will always be the same distance apart regardless of how far you extend them in each direction. Now, perpendicular means that they meet at a 90 degree angle. So this part right here, there's a perpendicular angle. Remember, perpendicular means it forms a L, a perfect L, okay? Capital. And you can see the sides intersect to make a right angle, and there's your 90 degree angle right in here. All right? So where do you see sides of perpendicular, sorry, where do you see examples of perpendicular on here? Well, here's a perpendicular, here's a perpendicular, here and over here. You can see them all over the place if you look closely, okay? Most of them are in squares and rectangles. So how do you know if two sides are perpendicular? And again, a side is perpendicular, or two lines make a perpendicular uh, angle when they form a perfect 90 degree angle. Right? Right? And how would you check that? Well, if you take any piece of paper, you can take the corner off a piece of paper and just insert it here on your textbook, and you should see that this should be on one edge of the corner of your paper, and this is on the other edge. And you'll see it should be perfect, or very close to it. If you can match this to a piece of paper, a corner on your paper, then you're pretty well guaranteed that it's going to be a 90 degree angle, okay? So how do you show two sides are perpendicular? Well, this is where we start getting into the construction and identification. Some of you are really terrible drawers. So what we do is we put in a little box here in our two angles, which are our L, and that tells me, your teacher, that you want me to assume that this makes a 90 degree angle. So if you're a lousy drawer, and for some reason you do something like this, all right, if you put this box in, I'm still going to understand that you want this to be seen as a 90 degree angle. Now, if you get too far off of 90 degree angles, uh, and this starts going something like this, well, then I'm just going to mark it wrong, because that's obviously not 90. And in grade 6, you should be able to make uh, a 90 degree angle close to perpendicular. Okay? Let's go to our next page. Now, let's start talking about what an angle is. An angle is a point where two rays meet. Now, this is a ray, and it's sometimes called an arm. You'll find angles, rays sometimes have a, uh, an arrow here, so you may see something that looks like this sometimes. You take this corner right here, and you go out. Take this corner here, and you go out. This is another way you'll see it happening. Now, this part right there, that's called the vertex. Okay, and that's where the two arms meet. The distance between the two sides here the arms, so that forms an angle. You know, a full 360 would be a full circle. So when you draw an angle, you're always drawing two. You have one right here, which is the interior angle, but you also draw another angle, which is on the outside right here. This is referred to as the reflex angle. So even if you draw an angle like this, there's one angle there, there's your other angle there. Draw a 90 degree angle, there's one here, there's the other there. So every time you draw an angle, you're actually drawing two of them. One's the interior, obtuse, right angle, acute, but on the outsides over here, 
you always have what's referred to as your reflex angle. Okay? Now, our next step is talk about classifications. When we talk about classifications, every angle can be classified by how big it is. The one reference we usually use is the right angle. Now, a right angle, as you know, makes a 90 degree angle. And you'll notice right here, I've got my little box in there saying that this is a 90 degree angle. Okay? Now, the other ones we're going to compare to this. So, for example, an acute angle is always less than 90. All right? And if you take a look here, you'll see that my vertical arm has been moved over, and this part here is smaller than this 90 degree angle right there. All right? Now, be careful. If I ask you for an acute angle and you do something like this, and it's just barely off, um, I'm going to think that you don't know the difference between an acute angle and a right angle. Okay? You're in grade 6. It's very easy for you. You should be able to take this angle and clearly make this an acute angle. So don't try to I mean, I'll guess, make me guess whether it's acute or not. Okay, if I have to guess, I'm not marking it. Okay, so we have a right angle, and when the angle is less than 90, we call it an acute. And the way I remember this is I always think of a cute little angle. Cute little, all right? Little being less than 90. All right, the second one is the obtuse angle. Now, obtuse angles are greater than 90 degrees, okay? And even if you think the word obtuse, it seems big. So that would mean that it has to be larger than 90. The same rule applies. You do something like this to me, I'm going to think you don't know the difference. Okay, it's very clear and easy for you to make sure that this goes over like that. All right. Now you'll notice as we start extending this down, we're getting closer and closer to a parallel line right across. Now that parallel line is referred to as a straight angle. And that means that this angle right here goes over and makes 180 degrees. And this little dot in the middle, that's where our arms meet. This is actually two different arms on our angle with our vertex right here. It just so happens they meet at 180 degrees. Okay? Now, let's go back up here and let's talk about those reflex angles again. Remember, this was our 90 degree angle. There's another one here. That's a reflex. This is our acute angle. There's another one out here. That's our reflex. This one here is obtuse. I should take and get rid of this part right over here so it doesn't get you messed up. And this one here is my reflex. Now, on this one, you have 180. This is not a reflex angle because reflex angles must be greater than 180 but less than 360. So in this case, we just have two right angles. All right, let's go to our next page. And again, here's our reflex angles. Reflex have to be greater than 180 and less than 360, so we just think of these as being the outsides of the angles we do. Now this is important because when we go to draw these, you're going to be drawing the inside angles and subtracting this from 360 to know how big to make this angle. And of course, if you draw this one, that one will be correct. But that comes in lessons a little bit later. So how do you tell the difference between an acute and an obtuse angle? Well, this references back to a 90 degree angle. Acute is less than 90 and obtuse is greater than 90. Okay. Note they can't be past 180 or they become reflex. Um, so remember, the acute has to be 90. And you can go back to the previous page and see what I mean by that. But obtuse is between 90 and 180. How can you tell the difference between an obtuse and a reflex? Well, obtuse goes from 90 degrees to 180, or greater than 90, but less than 180, while a reflex has to be greater than 180, but it's also less than 360. How could you check if an angle is a right angle? Well, the easiest thing to do is find anything you have that's got a right angle. Now, you could use a protractor, and you could measure it and get 90 degrees. But if you grab something we know is supposed to be 90, you could pretty well use, it, like I said, the corner of a piece of paper and just slide the piece of paper in to see whether or not it makes 90 degrees. So how do you know an angle is less? Again, use that piece of paper. All right. If this is the side, if you're supposed to have a, a triangle, oh, let's take a line here, okay? If I'm supposed to have a line like this and it's supposed to be 90 degrees, if I take my piece of paper here, I'm just going to make the corner of a piece of paper here for us. Uh, click, click, click. So here's my corner. Okay, maybe not. I'll fix that in a second. Okay, so here's my piece of paper that I've gotten off of a book or off a piece of paper, and I'm going to group that together. Now, look what happens as I slide this in. You'll notice that this is something we know is 90 degrees. We're not sure if this angle is 90, but take a look what happens. It's so close to 90 that my angle actually disappears almost right in it. So we know that the angle that we're trying to check right here, the bigger one, is actually 90 because it matches the angle I just pulled out of it, which we know is 90. Okay. So how do I know if something's less than 90? Well, this part here would have to cross inwards on the 90. If I want to know it's obtuse, when I put this in place, you'll see that it's greater than the 90. 
and that's what these are right here. How do you know what angle is greater than 90? Well, you can see it extends past it to the left here. Now, does the way an angle face change its size? So what I mean by that is, let's just take and get rid of my, bring my angle out here. This is 90, we know this is 90. Does it matter if I turn it, does that change what that angle is? The answer to that is obviously no. It's still going to make a capital L no matter how you turn it around. Okay. The second thing is, what happens if I make it larger or smaller? Does that change it? Well, if you take a look here, I can grab this and I can make it bigger. But you notice it's still a 90 degree. So what we know is that the length here, the length here, depending on your size, does not change an angle. The rotation, how you look at it, also does not change an angle. And this will come into play later when we do um, similar triangles and stuff like that later on, as well as starting to do construction of triangles a couple lessons from now. Okay, so if you have any questions, I want you to rewatch the video. This is just a general review, and uh, we'll see you next lesson.